Hellblade 2 is one of those great linear games that you can play and a lot of people are waiting for it. Its graphics is super good, it's awesome, but it's not a masterpiece. It's not something that will change next generations or it will add a lot of new features on the table. It's not Last of Us Part 2, it's not Red Dead Redemption 2, it's not another Gears of War and here's why. So facial animation is top notch. We can't really deny that. The facial animation is based on MetaHuman, they've talked about it a lot. The game is based on Unreal Engine 5 by the way, which has a lot of new features like Lumen and Nanite are pretty popular these days, but they are not for production, let me tell you that. If you use Nanite or Lumen or both together, a lot of people won't be able to play the game. Let me tell you that the game will be really really expensive to play, the performance will be really bad, the GPU costs will be really high, so if they are using it, which in my opinion they are using at least Nanite, I wish they have a good reason to do it to be honest, but facial animation is great, it's based on met metahumans, they, it's like they designed the character in metahuman, they animate it with an apple or I mean these days Facial animation is really easy to capture, you can have your iPhone in front of you and you can talk like the way I'm talking um, and you can have yourself animated on a 3D uh, character and its quality is top notch. So there's nothing else to talk about it. The thing they've done is just awesome. They've um, used metahuman characters and which is great. A lot of people have been talking about the image being a little bit soft, which in my opinion is not a bad thing, the game is kind of a cinematic game and they want it to be cinematic, um, and there's no reason for them to go after a really really sharp image. I'd really like it to be this soft, it makes the game to look a little bit blurry at times, but the quality is really good, it makes me feel like the game's being captured by an IMAX camera or something, it's really cinematic, I really like it. The depth of field quality is really good, I've honestly, I've never seen a depth of field quality in a production game this good. Usually depth of field can be really good at times in Unreal Engine, if you want to do something cinematic, if you're working on a movie, you can use really high quality depth of field, but not in here, it's just a game you, we have limited resources on a game, especially if it's gonna be run on consoles which can not have the performance that the PCs can have these days. So I wouldn't go for a high quality depth of field like this, but they've done it and they've done a great job, it looks amazing, but it's not something we haven't seen before, it's just something we haven't seen in games. And the fact that the game's gonna be running at 30 frames per second kinda justifies it. The game's running a lot of post-processing effects, a lot of post-processing effects on top of each other, like, <laughs> I mean the picture you're seeing here is just not, not real, without the post-processing power the picture is gonna be like, I mean the whole effect's gonna be ruined for you, so don't even try to look at the game like that, the post-processing is needed here, without it, we just have some meshes, some lighting, everything looks great but it's not amazing. Again, it's not like we have Last of Us Part 2 with those amazing waterfalls, with those amazing texture work, amazing animation work, and amazing programming. It's just a linear game, you can't even <laughs> change your path. They can easily put obstacles in front of you so that you don't really see what's going on in the background. A game like this, when you have no freedom to explore the environment, doesn't really have the power to compete with the high standards of the current, even the last generations, like Last of Us Part 2, where you could explore things, where if there was something behind the building you, you would be seeing, there you could go there. That's kind of an awesome thing to do, it's like the whole level design is like awesome, where if you're looking at something and if there's something in the background, that's not, I mean that's definitely intentional, but 
it's not like you will be limited to look at that building at that particular angle. This is what happens in Hellblade 2. The whole game is linear. If you are looking at something, the uh, art director, the art people, made sure that you don't see something else. Made sure that you are so much limited that you can't see what's happening behind the scene. That's something I don't like. The Hellblade is super linear and I don't like super linear games. Even Call of Duty is not that linear. I mean, Call of Duty is like a crappy game these days. It's open world, but if you pay the close attention, ever since it's gotten an open world game, the quality has gotten really bad. The graphics quality has gotten lower. Whereas 10 years ago, the game was linear, not super linear as, um, as much as Hellblade 2 is, but it was linear kinda, uh, and the quality was better. Open world quality is worse, the map is bigger, and there are a lot of more difficulties, technical difficulties that you have to overcome. In a game like Hellblade 2, they can easily divide the levels to sub-levels, and they can easily change the lighting based on that. So some levels have baked lighting, they don't really need an, uh, a global illumination or a dynamic global illumination or a baked uh, global illumination, doesn't really matter, they don't need it, they are just uh, working with a directional light, a light source, a lot of different point and spotlights, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that they have the ability to divide these uh, sub-levels so they can bake some of the levels and they can just go with the dynamic lighting in some other levels. Which gives them more freedom to have more quality in their picture. But the point is you are not free to explore in the game, the, everything is linear because they are uh, designing the game this way so you would see the best quality possible which in my opinion is not the best quality as the best quality means that you have the exploration you have the game being a game when you are free to do anything you want to do like GTA uh, and the quality is still high as hell like Last of Us Part 2 and Last of Us Part 1 there are fires in some of the scenes that you can see these background fires are just textures, kind of obvious, uh, which makes sense. Textures have been being used for a very long time since they are performance, and you can um, scale them for lower performance uh, PCs and consoles. It's just the way it has been for a very long time. But there is a fire here when the, the enemy throws you something with fire this fire doesn't look like to be a texture it's definitely something some real-time fluid simulation which is kind of interesting this is going to be the first time I've seen something 3d I mean Uncharted has done something similar but they've done it with meshes this one is I'm pretty sure it's Niagara fluid simulation which is a completely fluid simulation now that um, there are meshes involved but it's a fluid simulation which is expensive though it's super expensive so to handle something like this you have to make sure that you are cutting all the other things so you can have the performance resources for this <laughs> particular fire effect to happen in your game this is probably pretty important for them effects look really good in this game I'm not gonna lie one particular problem I had with Hellblade Sona Sacrifice was the lighting. Lighting was always dynamic and it didn't really look good. They've solved the problem here, the lighting looks really really good, but definitely we are a lot a lot more ahead these days. Uh, the next generation graphics, even the last generation graphics, we have volumetric fog, we have a lot of different uh, lighting methods that they can use and they are definitely using it. They are using volumetric fog super heavily It makes the game look really good really good if you don't have volumetric fog and if you are using dynamic lightings And uh, the game's not gonna look really good. It looks like a mobile game kind of or an, a really really old game They're using volumetric fog and it looks great, but it's not something that will change next generations It will it was here like 10 years ago, so it's not something new. 
So to sum everything up, the game looks really good, the uh, post-processing effects look awesome, uh, the VFX is awesome, they are really literally uh, doing the job well in the VFX stuff, it looks great. The only thing that I don't like is the game being super linear that they have to cut a lot of different things and make you go the path they want you to go so the game's quality could be really high. It's not highest high, but it's high, it's good, it's really good and it looks good. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you enjoyed it please hit that like button and have a great day, bye.